and welcome to County Board Wrap-Up. We're back from summer break. I'm your host, Ryan Hudson, and today we'll be talking with County Board Chair Jay Fassett and Board Member Libby Garvey about some of the important actions the Arlington County Board took at its September meeting on issues that affect you, your family, your community, and this month, even your pets. Welcome, Jay and Libby, and thank you for joining us. Thanks for having us. So I wanted to start, I know it was a very, it was, it was, a, it was a long meeting on both days, and so I wanted to start with, with the Lubber Run Community Center. The board ind endorsed the conceptual design for the new community center. Tell us what you like about the design. Yeah, I gotta tell you, I think at this point, almost everybody is incredibly happy. Uh, this is a 1956 building. It's the oldest community center in the county. It's time. We went through an extensive community process. Um, uh, two months ago, we gave it a couple more months to refine it yet further with community input. And what came to us is a very attractive building. Uh, it actually uh, attempts to implement the community facility study recommendations by removing a surface parking lot, putting parking underground. Therefore, even though it's a larger building, doing more, providing more services, very attractive, it actually allows for more open space and green space on the whole site. So this process finalized that conceptual plan, both the building and the parkland and the park around it. And one of the key features of this building is the sustainability elements built in with the board's direction that this ultimately be a net zero building, which is very exciting. Oh, that, yeah. that's excellent. That's an option. I, I think we're all absolutely committed to that option. And the other thing that's that's really cool that we still have to work through a little bit is the indoor track going around. That was sort of something brought in them, and everybody just loves that track. I think it'll be a wonderful facility. Uh, and another issue that you talk about is, is it's you know right next to Barrett Elementary School, so that you've got you know that cooperation. So there's a lot of discussion about that where it came to parking and things like yeah. that on how the two facilities work together. But I think it's a good example of cooperation. Yeah, over the last months of community discussion pulled the footprint in a little bit, saved a few trees, um, tweaked it a little bit more so that it actually um, is even more environmentally sensitive than the design a few months ago. So mm -hmm. it's all good. Yep, I think it's gonna win awards when it's done. Perfect, hopefully so. Yep. Now, you're at the point where it's endorsed the conceptual design. So what are the next steps for the community center now? Yeah, it goes into further uh, refined design and implementation. So hopefully the neighbors will have a community center uh, before too long. But it's also now a whole lot of change because this is construction manager at risk, right, which is a little different from what we've done before. So there's a set budget, and um, that, that budget is the budget, and the folks doing the buildings, they have already guaranteed they're going to stay within that budget. So they're not going to be a whole lot of changes. In fact, we hope no changes uh, because that's not kind of part of the process. We had a lot of process leading up to it, which I think we did pretty well, um, and then it's just going to get built. Um, with some input but not a whole lot of changes. And that's a little different from the way we do things. Um, this is the first one out of the box we've done, but it should save us money and some time, and I think it's going to be really good in the end. Great. Yeah, I think I speak for others in the county when I say I'm really excited to see the, the, the final process and to really be able to go and, and util, utilize that. Um, it wasn't the only community center, Lubber One, that was on the board's agenda this month. In an unusual step, the board decided to rent some space yeah. um, to another community center but to a business and to a very unique business. I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about that. Sure, Phoenix Bikes, which really I wouldn't call it a business as much as a nonprofit, I think, just sure. so people, it, it is a nonprofit. And uh, we've been trying to use that space for quite a while. Um, and but for a while we were trying to get, um, there were some restaurants thinking about coming in, which I think along that pike we need to get more, more businesses, more activity. Um, and those just didn't all work out, but Phoenix Bikes has been needing a place to stay for quite a while. Um, I'm actually on the, the board of Phoenix Bikes and watching it. It's an exciting little organization just taking off, serves youth in, in just about every school in the county now. Um, and basically, it's a community bike, uh, bike shop that's run by students or by, by youth. Um, there are adults there to make sure that things are okay. But uh, they just do wonderful work and have been on a tremendous upward trajectory on the number of bikes they repair, the number of students that they serve, the number of volunteers that come in. It is a wonderful community community group, um, and this is going to just allow it to go to get to the next level, which is starting actually in October, um, October 6 to uh, 4 to 6, I think we're going to have um, a bike summit. The National Bike Summit is going to be here in Arlington, Virginia, hosted at the Hyatt Regency in Crystal City, but the real hosts are Phoenix Bikes, and there's going to be a bike ride. So I, if anybody's interested in bikes and kids, and it's not just for kids, Sign up for that, uh, for that conference, take the sessions that you like, and join the bike ride. It's going to be great. That's exciting. Yeah. Looking to the future a little bit, do you think that we can expect to see more space in county buildings rented out like this? 
I think it's a, I think it's unusual. It was a competitive process. This wasn't that we picked Phoenix Bike, Phoenix Bikes. We tried to get restaurants and other retail, and ultimately you want activity. And Phoenix Bikes put their application in. It worked, and they will provide a real active element to the ground floor. They'll also sell products and provide services, and we have the benefit of them being an incredibly interesting, you know, a nonprofit that provides a lot of wonderful experience for young people yeah, in the yeah. community. So I, I think it's going to work out, but I don't think you'll see it a lot. I think um, it's it's something of an unusual situation. It depends on the location, I think. You know, right there on Columbia Pike, we wanted to activate the pike. It depends on the location, the building, and what we want to accomplish, and we'd already said that we wanted to have activity going on right there. Excellent, excellent. Uh, and we actually have a little more bike chat later in the show. We'll take a short break now, and when we come back, I'll ask the board about the direction it gave the manager on the question of whether two fields on the Williamsburg Discovery Campus should be lighted. Welcome back to County Board Wrap-Up, where we're taking a deep dive into some of the issues that came before the County Board. My guests today are Board Chair Jay Fassett and Board Member Libby Garvey. They're sharing with us some of their insights on a broad range of issues that affect you, your family, and your community. One of those issues from September's meeting was the Williamsburg field lights. I know that that was a, and has been a, a very complicated and lengthy process, and it brought out a lot of passionate residents at the meeting. Can you tell us why it was so hard and why it took so long to make a decision on the field lights for the Williamsburg Discovery Campus? Right, sure. It's interesting, you have uh, years of discussion about whether or not the presumption of when you get synthetic fields, you automatically get lights, was brought into play here. Because we got, had grass fields, then we had synthetic fields, and then for some there was a presumption of lights, and for others, they didn't think they were appropriate here. So we had multiple years of trying to figure out that question. And even here in Arlington, smart and kind as we are, three years, we don't always get to consensus. And this was not a consensus issue. Some of the neighbors felt it was inappropriate for a variety of reasons. A lot of people in the broader community in the uh, sports and, and uh, recreational areas felt very much that the demand, the growing demand for field time, uh, just demanded that we actually take advantage of expanding the hours available for kids uh, and adults on this, this surface. And in the end, what the board decided was that one, we acknowledge there's an incredible demand that we can't meet right now, we have to find new ways to meet it. We asked the manager to actually look at an, a couple of options and compare them. Do we have some areas that are lit that are grass that should be converted to synthetic? Should we put lights on Williamsburg or maybe a, a somewhere else? Um, and how do we best and most efficiently and effectively meet the need, the real need for that field time? So um, we also committed to put money in the next CIP, in the next capital budget. So what we decided, while we didn't decide to put them at Williamsburg at this time, we didn't take Williamsburg off the table for getting lights, and we actually didn't change the timeline. So there'll be a little more work done to synthesize what the best alternative, the priority is now to meet the need, but it'll stay pretty much on the same timeline it would have been even if we'd chosen to light Williamsburg now, because we had to go through the capital plan, we had to go through a bond issue with voters, and then we had to design and implement. So it's not going to be until probably 2019 that lights are seen anywhere or an improvement anywhere. But I think we took a step forward. Yeah, this is a particularly hard one, I think, and it, and it just sort of shows some of the changes we're going through. So when you put lights in, so we have lights at Longbridge Park, and that's very urban, there are big lights, and, and, it, and it feels appropriate there. Um, and then there's kind of a gamut, so you get a little bit less, you know, more, more residential. And Williamsburg is probably one, the most residential kind of area that you get. And so 80-foot lights, you can see, that just doesn't feel like it quite fits. Um, but there are great improvements in technology, um, and actually the s very similar lights to what uh, we're looking at putting at Williamsburg uh, are now at Wakefield. And so most of us, I think maybe all of us, went and took a night visit <laughs> to Wakefield to see the lights and how much it spills and affects the, the, the homes around. And, I, you know, I, for one, was very impressed at how much they really do contain the lights to that one spot. Um, and then I think their mitigation, you know, we have different times for when the lights go on and off. So Longbridge Park, they're on, like, a lot. 
uh, and quite late at night. Um, other places you'd turn them off more like 8.30 or 9, which is what we're looking for now. Um, and I haven't quite decided. It's going to come back to us as a permit in the, in the end. I think that's going to be really the final vote on it. Um, but I, I'm inclined to think if we have lights on till 8.30 or 9, um, that's similar to the summer when the sun's up and they're using the field that late anyway. So it doesn't feel like such a major change. Um, I, I'd never want to say keeping them on till you know 10 or 11 at night. That's way too late. Um, but so we're going to continue to work this through. But it really is that intersection in Arlington between residential and urban. And we see it over and over again. And it's quite contentious. Right. And talking about the future of Arlington's playing fields, what do you think the future holds? Will we see more fields? Will we see more lights? If, you, know, wh you know, where are we headed? I think everything's on the table. Uh, and as Libby said, um, when we first went to put synthetic fields, there was pushback because of more traffic. You know, you get a synthetic field, you get more use than when it's a dirt field or a grass field because you don't have the, it's not shut down for rain and weather. So initially, people were reluctant to have synthetic fields. Now we have a, a good number of synthetic fields and they're working very well and they expand the opportunity for playtime. Then you put lights on those synthetic fields and you have lights on some non-synthetic fields. So the, the point is here, just like our schools are growing and our community is growing, the need for field time is growing. And we on the board all acknowledge that. We have to find ways. It's just an issue of prioritizing those, mitigating the impacts, mm -hmm. finding the best technology, having those conversations with the community. But there will have to be more field time in the future. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, thank you both for shedding some light on that topic. Oh, very good. Oh. Well, I wanted to move on from lighting fields to improving streets and, and bike trails around the county. Um, there were a pair of multi-million dollar infrastructure projects you approved this month, but one I wanted to talk about, hopefully you can tell me a little bit about it, is the Washington Boulevard Trails Project. Um, what does that mean for people who ride bicycles in Arlington? Yeah. Well, I'm going to sum this up and say it's finally happening. It's totally cool and it, everybody should be fully happy about this. Uh, it's phase two of a really important north-south bicycle pedestrian connection. We got a lot of great trails. We're known for bike trails and the connectivity. Going north-south in the county is not always as easy as it is on some of the other routes. So what we actually have created is you, the first phase was building that trail along Washington Boulevard under Arlington Boulevard over to the Sequoia Building, our Department of Human Services. And then it sort of stops. And this continues that on, goes up, cuts up through Towers Park, and connects this trail to Columbia Pike so that you can go seamlessly now uh, when this is done from the Clarendon area to the Columbia Pike area. And it's in a real, and we've, it's improved. When it was first designed, it was a little more off the road, taking out more trees. Some of the neighbors raised concerns, went back to the drawing board, worked on it, and have re redesigned this to actually remove far fewer trees, and it's still going to be a terrific trail connection. So. Yeah. And All much, good news. Much needed. I was saying, I just the other day saw a, a cyclist, clearly she had a lot, a lot of bags, I think, doing you know, a, a big trip. Okay. And there she was on Washington Boulevard looking at her map, and clearly the bike trail had run out, and she wasn't sure where to go. I couldn't stop and help her, but I was thinking, oh, sweetheart, I hope you, you know, because it was not just the best place for a bike to be. Um, I assume she, she got out okay, but uh, it's much needed. You know, and this is actually part of that intersection between urban and, and residential, because bikes are part of improving our transportation system, and it's the way of making a, a, an urban area much more friendly to people, um, and it's important that we do it, but it also is not without controversy. Sure. As a cyclist myself, I certainly appreciate it. Um, now, with, with all the bike lanes in the county, and we have many, many miles of bike lanes, do you see them as, as mostly for recreation or mm -hmm. transportation, commuting, some sort of combination of all of it? All the above. Mm -hmm. All the above. Um, you know, ideally, every time you get in your car, you think about whether there's an easier, faster, healthier, cheaper way to do it. And interestingly, there are times when I want to go from point A to point B, and I don't want to deal with finding a parking space or paying for a parking space. And I know there are bike racks right outside, and the weather is fine. I can jump on that bike and be there in five, ten minutes. And I don't have all the time, the external time, of finding the parking space or driving around the street or polluting the air, and I can feel good about that. So it is about, as, as Libby said, improving the choices. It's not going to work every time for everyone, but it's more than commuting. 
Uh, it's recreation, it's commuting, it's, it's errands through the middle of the day, it just depends. Yeah, I use biking mostly for recreation myself, mm -hmm. uh, but my husband started commuting to work in the 80s when nobody did it. Um, and there wasn't yeah. much available, and so I'm always very sick, because I used to, for a while, worry about his commuting route. Um, but it's, it, he, I mean, he just praised it because he felt so good when he got to the office yeah. and back. It took care That's of right. his, his uh, you know, not a lot of exercise needs, and that uh, makes you feel better emotionally, physically. It's great stuff. And the more cyclists there are, the safer it is, too. Yeah, right. absolutely. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Excellent news all mm -hmm. the way around. Yep. We're going to take another short break now, and when we come back, we'll talk bonds and bands. Welcome back to our final segment on September's County Board Wrap-Up. We're talking with Board Chair Jay Fassett and Board Member Libby Garvey. Now, one of the things that happened during September's board meeting was that the board approved the sale of up to $52 million in bonds. What exactly were those bonds going to be financing? Well, I think it was up to $54 million, actually. Oh, and uh, there, are, there are a number of different things. You know, it depends on, on how it all goes, exactly how they go out there. And bonds, I just will say, that's how we, it's kind of like a mortgage in a way. That's how we finance projects. And because we have this AAA bond rating, we get money at a very, very good rate. Plus, we then we do refinancing sometimes, which actually gives us, gives, gives us more, more money to, to work with and improve the community, which is great. So one of them was purchasing the Buck property, which we have agreed to do. We've put in a sort of a small down payment, if you will. Um, but we've got another, I think it's $34 million, uh, that we need to put in. That's right across from the Ed Center on Quincy Street. Um, we have not decided what we're going to be doing there, but we know we want that, that property. I think one of the things you hear there is our need for facilities and um, everything just to help us land. all live together, mm -hmm. land, live in this county as more and more people want to come here. Um, and then there, uh, we also wanted to take, um, you know, as I say, we like to take advantage of these historically low low interest rates. Um, there's some technology projects we wanted to fund as well. Um, it's just, it, it's something we typically do from time to time and folks will see this and uh, we look at it carefully. It's how we get things done and it really helps keep this, this community um, the delightful place it is. And you sort of alluded to it there in your answer, but I know the county is planning now to part of this to refinance more than $30 million in existing bonds. What's the, what's the reasoning behind that? Well, the, interest rates. Yeah, the, the <laughs> yeah. refunding is right. The interest rates are low enough that we can go back and refund some of our previously sold bonds and save the taxpayers millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. And that's a part of this decision we made as well. Mm -hmm. And the only other sort of significant piece in the amount of money that would be uh, bonded is to get the uh, piece of property that will relocate the Head Start program. Right. So um, these are all things we do on a regular cyclical basis when we need to. And fortunately, as Libby said, we have a credit rating that allows us to borrow money at really the lowest possible rate you know, on the planet. Yeah, no, we're, we're very lucky. And, I say, and it could continue the analogy. Bonds are like kind of mortgaging. Refinancing is like refinancing your house when the mortgage rates are better. So interest rates are better. So and we're lucky. That's great. And with the bond sale, I think it's important to ask, will the county still be within its self-imposed debt limit? Absolutely. Yes. Excellent. Count that's, on it. That's yeah, great. absolutely. <laughs> Excellent. We're going to turn now from bonds to bans, uh, specifically a ban on exotic pets in Arlington, um, with some important exceptions. Um, so I know that a lot of work went into crafting this ban on exotic pets. What sort of interest was the board trying to balance here? Yeah, I think when uh, a resident or two came to us years ago and yeah, proposed a ban on exotic animals, um, we had staff look at this and determine uh, whether this was a good idea, whether it was easy, whether it was needed. We really hadn't had issues with it. At one point in the past, there had been a venomous snake that had gotten loose, and we actually passed an ordinance many years ago banning venomous snakes. Uh, but what about the rest? You know, do we have this problem? Well, sort of and really not. Um, in the end, we decided to take it on because a lot of our neighbors had such a ban, and it made sense to update ours. In the end, it was more complicated and more nuanced because we heard from a lot of people we hadn't heard from before. A lot and of them not what? in Arlington. And some not <laughs> yeah. in Arlington, but others yeah. that do live here yeah. that Absolutely. actually had some of those creatures uh, and they consider them pets. So it became a much more complicated but nuanced but positive. I will tell you in the end, the staff had a first draft. We looked at it. We got input. The staff engaged with the community, listened to the community, Everybody talked with one another, sort of something you'd wish happened more often in this world these days, and we came up with a compromise that we think is a very enforceable, logical advance 
on banning a full range but also exempting others and providing certain alternatives if, uh, if there is a, a, such a pet in Arlington. Yeah, it was great. I, I think the only problem was how late we ended up going on that one, which, uh, which, which was pretty late at night when we did it. But uh, it was a really good example of, of folks working together. We even had yeah. some people come and tell a story about Henry, the boa constrictor who had to be given up and they, how they helped find a home for Henry. Um, and uh, anyway, there are a lot of people really interested and willing to work together. And I think it came, we came out in a really good place. Right. Unlike some of our other issues over the weekend, this one, everyone came together and they were all supporting the recommendation yeah, that yeah. we adopted. And I think we all learned what a hedgehog was during the last <laughs> oh, year yeah. as well. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew it was such a popular pet. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. oh, no, they're very cute. They're very cute. It was a feel good moment. Unfortunately, I think it was at midnight. When did we have that feel good moment? We had a lot of going on. <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of the hedgehog, what, what about the resident who already has a hedgehog or or one of these pets that now falls under this exotic pet ban. What does that mean for them? Hedgehogs don't fall they don't. under it. They're, They're actually one of the exceptions. They did they originally one of the exceptions. So they were in the original ban, uh, the proposal from staff, and after a lot of conversation, that was deemed to be not necessary to ban. So for example, in that case. And if you are and if you now if one of the if you have a pet that is on the on the list now, you already have it, are you being grandfathered in or how does that work? There is an opportunity mm -hmm. to be grandfathered in if you register your your pet. Uh, you also can, prov it provides for opportunities to um, not just destroy the pet, but pass the pet on to another sort of responsible owner outside of Arlington. Mm. Oh, excellent, excellent. And now you alluded to it, Libby, it was a very lengthy board meeting this mm -hmm. month. Um, we have touched on some of the topics here, but I know that there were, that there were many more uh, that, that happened, in particular, uh, uh, child care that I know you wanted yeah, to Yeah, we had a child on. care issue. We had a, a bed and breakfast issue. And some of these had been on consent, which is usually they don't, you know, but people that they want to talk about it gets pulled off of consent. And we think it's not a particularly difficult issue. And suddenly we have 40 people coming and wanting to talk about it. The child care one was an interesting one. It was a, 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 a Little Ambassadors is the name of the, the company. And they have two sites. And they were on Open Third on Lee Highway, which is, you know, a fairly urban area. Um, and people found out about it at the last minute, although we've made efforts, we're always working on our communication, can we do better, but one street particularly, McKinley Street, uh, suddenly everybody got really upset and concerned about it and came, and I think by the end most people realized that really any, any impact would be on the street next door on Lexington Street, which was, my, and they were not going to have that, but we had to reassure people and go through things, um, and I think it's going to be a real addition, it is going to be large. But we heard the stories we heard about parents trying to find childcare, um, people getting on lists when they were uh, like their second day. They found out they were pregnant, and the next day they get on waiting lists, and five years later their child gets into a. Wow. And it's the stress and strain that this community is under, and I think it's a national issue really. Um, but those folks who need to find a good quality childcare, it is not easy. Yeah. Um, so we're working hard on trying to find more ways to do it. You have to blend in with the neighborhood. I think when this is all said and done, it will be just fine. As I say, it's the third facility. The first two are really, um, we've heard nothing but good things about it. I think they know what they're doing. It'll be a good addition. Well, and in the earlier segment, we talked about the need for field space. Yeah, right? Another there you go. Need in the county is childcare, uh, quality childcare. And we did hear a lot of those stories. Yeah. So, you know, this was, uh, um, a situation where a very reputable provider wanted to expand the opportunity for child care and there were some questions that hadn't been yet vetted or some of the neighbors hadn't satisfied themselves that they understood the circulation flow of the cars whether they'd be backing up whether they'd be um, uh, making their own street less safe or mm -hmm. secure we had to walk through all that and understand it better and I think we came to a place where from their past experience and our past experience, right off of Lee Highway and Arterial Road at an inter, uh, a signalized Sign intersection, light, yeah. that there was a sufficiently <laughs> good plan that should work. If something doesn't work, our staff, the board, always has the ability to come back and refine that, even to reduce the number of slots available to ensure that yeah. the impact on the immediate neighborhood is not, is not bad. And it comes back to us in a year. For review. It'll always come It'll back, come back, as back a, to us as in a year. Permit, for review. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so. right. And child care is obviously an, an important issue for residents oh, in the yeah. county. Oh, yeah. And so and so so is commuting. And I know that there that another issue at, at the meeting was the VRE station over in Crystal City. Right. If you could tell us a little right. bit more about yeah. that. Yeah. Well, there's a station in Crystal City. Um, it's actually I think it's the busiest station in the second, second busiest. Um, and and it, they it's old and it needs to be moved. And they're going to try and make it more efficient. Instead of being on one side of the track, it'll be in the middle of the track, so it's more efficient for people moving. And there were three options: the current location, uh, what they call option two, and option three. All of them pretty close. 
Um, and after a lot of study, VREs decided they would like this option too. Um, our staff agreed that that seemed to be best. Um, a lot of groups like the Crystal City bid also liked it, but there is a condominium right there, and the folks that are going to have the station moved in front of their building were concerned about it and are concerned about it. Um, so we had a lot of a lot of discussion, um, and I think some of it, the, the most of the noise actually is from the CSX trains, not from the VRE trains. But their okay. concerns were about noise, about exhaust. Um, and I think there's some ways for station construction to actually help with both the noise um, and if there's any kind of exhaust issue. And right. VRE is going to go back and look at it some more. We, but, boy, we went really yeah. long and late on that one. We want to be very sensitive to neighbors that have maybe the most immediate impact. And yeah. we also have to think about the best solution, the best location for this expanded platform uh, in this major rail corridor for thousands and thousands of people that it actually maximizes the connection between the regional transportation system and the local transportation system. That became one of the key elements for our staff, professional staff, yeah. for the Virginia Railway Express staff, for the business community in the, in the Crystal City area, How, where those choices were relative to the Crystal City Metro Station and the other local transit. So in the end, the board uh, reinforced or supported the, the option the staff had recommended this station two option, right. but we also ask that before uh, they they move to completion, they come back during the conceptual stage, share their thinking, and that we always continue to look at, you know, are there any flaws we didn't anticipate, or are there ways to mitigate impacts, and yeah. that will all be part of future design. There's a lot more design to go, and actually, we, we might mention here, too, that we're looking at moving forward with a footbridge, a, a bridge, so pedestrians can walk to the airport. Mm -hmm. So we're about in this one place going to have trains and metro and walking and, and biking and planes. And I'm still interested in that ferry up and down the river. We might get it all. <laughs> but, you know, it just comes about to finally, I think this is such a, it, it's such a great place to live. More and more people come. And that is a wonderful resource and a wonderful thing. And the people that come are great folks. But we have to all learn how to live together and move around together. And that causes stresses and strains. So I think our, and it, it gives us this AAA bond rating. I think all of these issues are our growth and our, how well we're doing. It's a two-edged sword because it's a constant balance to make sure that we keep moving forward and we don't lose what we value most as we continue to grow. Well said. On that note, Jay and Libby, I want to thank you both for joining us today to talk about a very lengthy and complicated September board meeting. We hope you've enjoyed our chat with board members. Remember that all county board meetings are open to the public and live streamed right here on ATV. You can find the schedule and information on speaking at a board meeting on our website at countyboard.arlingtonva.us. To learn how you can get involved in county government or to make sure your voice is heard on issues, visit topics.arlingtonva.us slash engage. That's our civic engagement webpage. You can share your ideas there and learn how to get involved in county issues. We'll be back with another County Board Wrap-Up in October, and we'll see you then.